What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo. Joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, a lot of things to talk about. Well, first, we'll get into something that's been sort of uh, taking over the, the airwaves with, with the rumors. Everybody's talking about the possibility of, and forgive me if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, incorrectly um, Teron Egerton. Uh, I think it's Edgerton. Edgerton. Teron yeah. Edgerton. Brian, I think with the amount of rumors that's going around about this connection of him possibly being Wolverine, and people have been casting him for a while back. You know, and we you know he's been getting in shape, but he's been getting in shape for another film, but who knows? There's also rumors of him um, having conversations with Kevin Feige or with Marvel. Let's say with Marvel. Now, we all know that Hugh Jackman has been Wolverine for what over 15, 20 years? How long was it? Was it like was it 20 years? Uh, yeah, so X-Men, original X-Men is the summer of 2000. And yeah, I mean, Lo he goes out with Logan. That was, I guess, was 2017. So yeah, okay. 17, 18 years. So he's been this character, and he's done other great stuff. But he's been this character, and everybody knows him to be Wolverine. So anyone taking over this spot is going to have a lot of pressure on them, obviously. Now, Brian, I've already, if you all don't already know, my pick has always been uh, Mr. Zach McGowan. Uh, he's in Black Sails. I think he was in one of the episodes of Ages of Shields. Um, he's done a couple of things, but I think he is the um, perfect actor for this role because he's unknown and because he has a look and because he has, and he's done some other good stuff as well. So I think he'd be perfect for it. Uh, but Ta Taron Edgerton, people have looked to him because he checks a box that most people um, depict Wolverine as, which is being very short. He's a very short dude, right? Yeah, 5'9", five, five, official listing. So you can probably say he's probably like 5'7". <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he fits that... You know, he checks off on that, that box right there. Now, the other things that concern me, Brian, because I don't have any doubt that, you know, he's a great actor. You know, he's done a lot of good stuff. Um, I, ha, is he an Oscar winner? Golden Globe winner. So Golden he won Globe. Okay. Rocket Man. Yeah, he can, he can sing. Like, not that, not that you ever want to hear Wolverine's chops. Yeah, yeah. This guy can, like, because he's been in the Sing, Sing 2 movies, and he really does sing in those. And people are like, and he did sing. In Rocket Man, that actually is his voice on the Elton John song. Oh, so, okay. Unique, a unique talent in that way in Hollywood. So, my concern, Brian, has always been: can they make him look and feel like Wolverine, and not someone who's just named Wolverine? Because to me, Wolverine, I think of savagery. I think of a person that's tough. He's a tough guy, all the way through. There's no a fear in him whatsoever. He's very menacing. He has a very a big presence to me anyway. And he doesn't fit those characteristics of Wolverine. Will he have to be transformed like Colin Farrell was? Brian, I don't know. Maybe, I think. Does his voice have to sound a certain way? To me, Wolverine, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm spoiled. I grew up on the X-Men animated series, and that voice solidifies the voice for X-Men, uh, for, for Wolverine. And he's, you've heard that voice or every iteration of that voice ever since. There's been no deviation other than that um, Japanese animation joint that they did. That, you know, it was, it didn't look like Wolverine to me, so I really wasn't into it. But Brian, what are your thoughts? Do you think this is pretty much they just haven't confirmed it yet. Um, or 
or would you you do or would you want someone else and who would it be uh so other things where i would say he probably fits the profile she's 32 years old so i think if you're looking you know hugh jackman's 60. so yeah. if you're looking for someone who can be this for i think you honestly probably need you need at least 10 but probably 15 years if you're thinking if you can x-men franchise x-men crossover into avengers world at some point like solo movies you probably need like 15 years so 32 to 47 works i think you also have to do pay respect to he has shown that he has um action chops when it comes to physicality the kingsman movie he's required to kind of do some kind of over the top type of movement he's pretty good at it. i'll give yeah. him that like he gives you a little bit of that you know it's like part bond part born and he's obviously he's, be at, he's agile and an acrobat yeah, exactly he look and he doesn't look out of place when he's doing his own stunts right so i think that's an important thing because wolverine has like a unique combat set right he's not like a traditional martial artist he's not really sort of a bulldozer he's you know kind of a hybrid of, of that so and I, and I, let me interject real, real quick with this the hugh jackman version of wolverine to me was basic in terms of fighting skill nothing it disrespected the comics version of his prowess and kind of ignored the fact that look over centuries of development especially a lot of time spent in the far east which yeah. you know Okay. Uh, that Wolverine actually, yeah, combined sort of almost like this animal quickness with human, you know, sort of fighting skills. We never really saw that. We said we'd say Hugh get angry, and we'd see him take punishment, yeah. but we didn't necessarily see him be a great fighter hand to hand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you know, Edgerton pretty agile. The, the 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 voice and the demeanor you hit on. That's my biggest concern. Um, can he? Because Quite honestly, like, I don't know that Hugh Jackman would ever admit it, but to me, he, Hugh Jackman always felt like he was aiming for the car, for the animated series voice. Like his effect yeah. was like he was studying the character in the 90s cartoon and trying to kind of channel that into a live action version. So that's what it always sounded like to me that he was doing, especially when he would get angry, the yes. voice would switch into that mode. Yeah. Just know that there's a lot of room to like, Someone said like, hey, I'm gonna go with a like a, a lighthearted note. That's an automatic zero, right? Like so so you can only go kind of go dark, darker, fierce, fiercer. Does Edgerton have that in the in the palette? I don't know. Um yeah. you know, we've been surprised before. Like, you know, I always I always go back to the ledger example with the Joker. I would never have thought his voice could sound the of way course. it sounded in that movie based on the work he had done. So of maybe course. it's in there. But I I think like you, I think of Wolverine as deep. I think of him as not always talking a whole lot, um, but when he does, you know, it's there's there's an edge, um, and that's both towards allies and villains. Yeah. Um, and then I think the other thing with with Edgerton is, you know, like the Kingsman series, he like I said, he has a channel bond, so he's very suave, even when he's a kid off the streets and they recruit him. Does he have the the primal does he have the the kind of the, the evil side that you're gonna need um to really make yeah. wolverine believable that's why i think the character becomes very challenging uh, yeah. and i don't i don't know uh, i have i have my doubts but like to be clear this is not from a secondhand source this is taron edgerton saying on the promotional tour for blackbird which is a apple apple plus show that he met with marvel about a certain project and then said he would really like to be Wolverine. So he clearly put his hat in the ring with Kevin Feige. Now that doesn't mean he'll get the part, but it clearly was one of the parts they talked about for him to be yeah. public with it. So yeah. um, I don't know. I, 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 I'm kind of like, like I guess it would kind of be one of those, I don't think it's an automatic disaster, but I would need to see some footage or some concept art and hear him to feel like we're in good hands for the next I need minute. to hear him. I need to hear him. I need to hear him. Concept art is concept art. For me, I need to hear him and see him. Because concept art, you can make look dope. Whatever, right? But I need to see him. I need to hear him. And those are my 
biggest concerns, man. That's why I think Zach McGowan checks off on a lot of those things, except for being short. Yeah. Which Hugh um, Jackman is not short. Hugh Jackman yeah. is he, six foot two. Yeah. We already and, and people still want, and people still want him to come back. So I don't want to hear about oh he's too tall. No, no, I want a comic book. No, 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 no. Forget about. And Wolverine, the comics is five foot four, five foot. Yeah. Three. Really short. Really short. He's like Muggsy Bogue short. short. <laughs> um, but Brian, I mean, you still haven't told me. I don't know if you do have anyone in mind already um, for Wolverine. Do you have anyone in mind? I don't specifically. It's funny. I thought I actually, but I agree. Your concept. And I would say you have support from the writers of Deadpool, which you probably saw. The writers of Deadpool 3 weighed in on this because there's been a lot of talk about Hugh Jackman doing a cameo in Deadpool 3. It's still kind of a running joke that's going on. But the writers then said, listen, for the future, their recommendation, if Kevin Feige ever asked them, would be an unknown. That would be their, their belief is that a younger unknown would be the better way to not kind of bring distraction to the character. I agree with that. I agree. I, 100%. Come on, man. Just look at the, the look at, uh, what's this guy's name? Chris Hemsworth. Who was he before that? Hugh Jackman. Who yeah. was he? Come on. These guys were nobodies. They were on their way. But these roles, nobody knew who they were, but they instantly recognized them because they, gave you that feeling of that's Wolverine, that's Thor, that's Captain America, that's freaking Tony Stark. They did that. So you identify with I don't Teron Edgerton, I see him as that Rocket Man and, and and Kingsman. He's he's done a lot of dope stuff. You know, and I I I get it. You know, this is a chance of a lifetime for him if you want, you know, to play a, a character that he perhaps been wanted to play for a while. Um, and the opportunity is right there. He's having talks. I'm sure he's not, I'm sure he's in a list of people come try out, right? I think it's that. I think this is a trials moment and he's one of the guys. We don't know who the other guys are. Perhaps they are these unknown people that I'll be ecstatic to find out when they're announced or confirmed to be uh, the choice for Wolverine. That's what I'm waiting for because they know it, Brian. We know it. Everybody knows it. That they can't mess up with this character. They cannot. They cannot. So let us know what you guys think about the possibility of Teron Edgerton possibly being Wolverine. Do you think he already has the part? Who would you want to see? Check out Zach McGowan. I'm telling you, man, I don't just do yourself a favor and go look up Zach McGowan, YouTube, see some of his work. And you're going to be like, yo, I showed it to, I was at a barbecue a couple of weeks ago. And, and the, there was a dude that was selling t-shirts. He was friends of the family or whatever. And we started talking about MCU. I said, you follow this? So I, hey, I got to get my subscribers, you know, so I got to talk. So I told him about, the show and we started talking about it and I told him about who would you think of, would be Wolverine and he had the same sort of names that have been thrown out there Daniel Radcliffe and whatever I believe he he, he did mention Teron Edgerton I think um and I showed him this guy Zach McGowan and he was like yeah, I could see that I just by the look just they never seen him before in terms of acting and they haven't seen it before. This is the first time they, they saw him when I showed it to him. Like, yeah, he, yeah, he looks he looks legit. So I mean, yourself a, go ahead. I was going to say the other thing, my, my understanding and impression of some of these meetings is it's not always just about one character, right? It, 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 sometimes the meeting is about several different projects, right? And they're gauging the actor's interest. They're also kind of feeling out like where where the, the actor might have input on like where they where their passion is like where they feel like they're fitted. Yeah, yeah. Like let's be let's be let's be frank here. There's a lot of roles open, right? There's an entire like we talk about Wolverine because everyone's fixated on that succession, but you know, like I'll throw I'll float some if you say like all right I've got Teron Edgerton I know he's an asset 
I want to bring him into the MCU. Where could he fit? Johnny Storm is 5'10". I'm just going to float it. Like, if he, in the comics, he's 5'10". He is blonde. He's got blue eyes. I mean, so maybe you could do that. I mean, now Cyclops is taller, but if you want Scott, I'm just saying there's other, nah, I don't think it's right, but I'm saying you could sit down with Taron Edgerton and say, look, I have a whole bunch of roles. Maybe I mean, she'll be other than, I don't know if he has, I don't see him as doom either, but I'm saying like you sit down and you say, okay, I got a couple of slots here of which Wolverine is only one. I don't, and Karen Edgerton may say that's my, that'd be what I want the most because it's the highest profile yeah. role. But like, don't rule out him showing up in another capacity. Yeah. Um, like for example, we, you know, we, we kind of have, uh, scoffed a little bit at you know Charlize Theron as Clea but like I would guarantee you that like Marvel's conversation with Charlize Theron was not hey do you want to be Clea it was probably like we're looking at it we're circling a number of roles and this is the one they ultimately agreed on but she probably was looked at or she probably talked to them about other ones in the past so yeah. you know it, what it tells me is you're going to see Teron Edgerton probably in the MCU I just wouldn't take it as gospel that it's going to be Wolverine or Iceman. Who knows? Oh, there you go. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. There's so yeah, yeah. many right now that yeah, need yeah. to be populated. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let us know in the conversation below. This is a very interesting topic because we don't know, and I think we're still far off from getting these characters. What would be will be the only one you could probably start with, Brian, because of his because of his history where he begins right he you know he he's a character that's been throughout he's lit for a while so he's in there you know so that is that's a, a a character that you can start with and really dive into and explore um brian people say oh he only belongs in the movies i could see a wolverine every week right i can see the I other see, thing people got to not be too hasty too is like you know look marvel's done this both ways but to cast a lot of the X-Men lineup with no X-Men director would be a little bit unusual. Yeah, yeah. Because that's going to immediately rule out. There are going to be certain directors who won't take your phone call because they're going to be like, wait, I don't get I don't get to pick the cast. The cast is already picked. I'm not I'm not interested. You know, when we talk about like Branagh, or sorry, Chris Hemsworth and Thor, Kenneth Branagh was a director, a Shakespeare guy at heart. He had a hand in discovering both Chris Hemsworth and Tom Hiddleston that movie yeah. you know so but there were also instances where marvel like in the chris evans case marvel was auditioning the actors and and contracted chris evans before they brought in joe johnston to direct first avenger so they have done it both ways but i can't see them doing like hey we're gonna populate 10 characters here with no directors yeah. in this chair so yeah. fascinating subject Fascinating. Um, yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of this uh, possibility. Um, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report.